MySQL or MariaDB, which is a drop-in replacement fork of MySQL, are both really popular relational database management systems. And today, we're going to have a look at how to get MariaDB set up on Linux and how to create a database and basically just get started with it. Everything that I do in MariaDB will be compatible with MySQL because I'm not doing anything complicated. I think there might be some stuff that may not be compatible, but we're not going to run into any of that today. So let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So as I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be using MariaDB instead of MySQL. So if we just go to the Arch Linux wiki for a minute, there we go. So basically, as you can see here, it's pretty much just a drop-in replacement for MySQL. I am not sure the exact reason for this, I'm sure someone would know, but basically on Arch Linux, MariaDB is the preferred version, so I'm just going to use MariaDB, just so I don't have any troubles with that. So going on from that, I'm guessing that MariaDB is probably available in other distros, package managers, but on Arch we can just run sudo pacman s MariaDB and I've already got it installed so there's no point reinstalling that, but if you're on Ubuntu you can probably just use apt-get for that. If you can't then I'm guessing MySQL is available, I'm not actually sure on that system myself. But one of the two will be available, if not then there are other ways to get MariaDB. So from here I guess we can basically actually get the database set up. Actually, no, before we do that, so when you install it, you're going to try to run it and you're going to get this error. And when I first got this error, I had no idea what the problem was. So it's actually a really, really obvious error. So basically what you want to do is just start up the service. So MariaDB.service. The first time I used this, I was really new to Arch. I didn't even really realize it was a service I had to start up. So put in my root password. Now we can log in as the root user to the relational database management system basically. So there's, if you were on Windows you would have set a root password when you installed MySQL. The issue is that when you install it like this, I checked before and it says my root password is invalid. So what it's actually doing is just using my system's root password. So we can just log in using sudo. So sudo mysql dash u root if you notice I'm peeking over, I've just got the commands up on my other screen because I never remember what they are. So if we do that, then bam, we have MariaDB open. So from here, it's fairly simple to create a database. So create database and we'll give it a name. So just let's say video underscore DB, it can be anything. Here you can also set your character set and how your database is collated. If you don't know what database collation is, then you probably don't need database collation. And the character set is basically just how the strings are encoded and things like that. So we can run this and make sure you have a semicolon in the end and that will run perfectly fine. So from here we want to, because we don't want to always be logging in as the root user, that is fairly dangerous for obvious reasons. If you were using this for an API, for example, and then someone was to able to actually get access to your root user, if you're doing it like this, they may be able to get access to your computer's like root password and that would be very dangerous. So what we want to do is create a user for the database. So we'll give it a name. Let's, why does it API? That's what it says on my screen. <laughs> Let's say DB user. You should probably give it a better name than this, but it's fine as it is. And it'll be at local host because it is running on your local machine, I'm guessing. I'm not actually, I'm guessing that's the reason for that. And then identified by, I don't know, okay, here's another one. I don't know why it's identified by the password because you never actually identify it by the password. It's, that's just what the command is. So, and then we say db password. Once again, don't actually use this as a password. That's a very, very bad idea. You will lose all of your data if you do that. Cool, so we created a user and if you're going to be using this, I wouldn't even say just using this for a REST API. This is just a good idea in general. So what you want to do is have your root user separate from your database user or your database root user. So you want to have a root user for the database and a root user for the relational management system. So what we're going to do is effectively set this user as the root user of this database itself. So what do we call the database? Video DB. So if we do video underscore db dot star, basically that will just 
I'm guessing it will put... Once again, I'm not 100% sure on these details. It must put some sort of string on the end of the video DB name. So the dot star will just get anything that matches that. And we want to grant all on the video DB to the user we just created. So the DB user at localhost. And you spell it properly and it will work. Cool. So if we want to quit out of this, we can just run quit or there's a couple of other ones. You can probably just control C out of it. And now we should be able to log into the database as that user. So it is db underscore user and the then dash p and then the password. And then the last thing we want to provide is the database that we're logging into. And that would be the video underscore db. So if all things have gone well, this should work. All things that did not go well and this did not work. What did we do? Uh, oh, right. Don't put the spaces in there. My bad. So you want to write MySQL dash U and then directly after that have the name. I don't know why it's set up like this. It's, I've never seen a command work like that. And now, as you can see, this prompt here is different from what we had before. So when we were in here before, if we go back in to MySQL, it says none. So basically this is running as the the root of the relational management system that is not connected directly to a database. And this other one, you are running directly inside of the video DB base, uh, database basically. So from here you can write any SQL commands you want to do. It's assuming that we had a, a table, let's say we have a table called people. Assuming we just had this table, you could just write any normal SQL stuff in here and it will work. Obviously we don't have a people table, so that's gonna fail, but you can easily go through and create all that stuff yourself. And yeah, I think that is a fairly solid overview. I might come back and actually talk about some basic SQL stuff so you can actually get started using this as the backend for a REST API. Apart from that, I think for this video, we're pretty much done. So if you like this video, remember to like and subscribe and hit the little bell icon below if you wanna see more from our channel. If you like basically these simple tool reviews and these simple tutorials for pretty much things that you're going to be using as a developer, whether you like it or not, then yeah, let me know in the comments below. If you don't want to see stuff like this anymore, tell me that as well. I'm not as interested in those comments, but hey, gotta help me with the algorithm, I guess. So yeah, if you think you know someone who liked this video, share it with them as well. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.